it's our first time in the Cotswolds. We just got out of the car and already I'm like, oh, look at that. Oh, look at that cottage. Look at this church. Look at that cool door. There's just so much incredible, unique things. And it's just the first village that we're stopping at. <laughs> the Cotswolds, the idyllic English countryside known for its rolling hills, its honey-colored stone cottages, and picture-perfect villages. Over the next three days, we will be immersing ourselves in the Cotswolds' rich history, eating some of the local cuisine, and exploring some of the hidden corners that make this area of natural beauty a true wonder. I love that there are birds chirping everywhere. It's just so peaceful. It truly feels like a fairy tale. And this is just the first village. This is Painswick, known as the Queen of the Cotswolds. This charming village is, I think, the perfect way to kick off our weekend. This church here, St. Mary's Church, is a prominent place that you have to visit if you come here. It's probably most famous for its 99 yew trees in the churchyard. And there are 99 and not 100, because according to legend, every time they tried to plant the 100th tree, the devil would take it out. So that's why there are 99 yew trees here. And they're incredible. I wasn't sure what to expect about, you know, some, some trees in a churchyard, but they're pretty magnificent, wouldn't you say? They look really cool. Yeah. I love that some of these yew trees have merged together and made these cute little tunnels throughout the area. Just notice that each one of them is numbered and they uh, apparently each are sponsored by somebody. I didn't notice how huge some of these would be. Like, Jer Jeremy is a tall person and these just tower above him. But like most English things, some of the some of the little passageways are not tall enough for you. Yeah. It's like a little fort in here. Kinda, yeah, I can stand upright inside here, but then I got a duck to get out. I feel like everything about this place so far is very like picturesque fairy tale. Or maybe more appropriately like Alice in Wonderland yeah, or something. Yeah, just incredible. <laughs> You know, when we got here, the car park was full. I mean, people say get here early, and I think that applies to anywhere in the Cotswolds. The thing that's really incredible is that even though there are quite a few people uh, out and about within the churchyard, it doesn't feel crowded. Like, it's just very peaceful and tranquil, and everyone's so friendly. Everyone we've come in contact with has said hello. I don't know, maybe that has more to do with the fact that it's a nice sunny day in England. <laughs> 10 out of 10, would recommend. If Nick Cage were to be buried in England, that's where he'd want to be buried. The Cotswolds. <laughs> and how do you like Painswick? Me or her? Now that she's being pet, 10 out of 10. <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting that we've seen multiple buses go by. Yeah, I think it would be easier to do the Cotswolds with a car, but it is pretty cool. And once again, it shows how your public transportation system is better than ours, that there is buses that go through here. <laughs> stopping for lunch at a place that I think Jeremy and I are both very excited to try. This is the Weybridge Inn. It is a 17th century pub that is famous for one thing, and that is their two-in-one pies. And they look as amazing as that sounds. The concept of two pies in one is exciting. Let's go give them a whirl. <laughs> I have so many choices, it's hard to choose. So the deal with their two-in-one pies is you get to choose a filling, and then the other side is filled with a veg, generally a cauliflower cheese. I went for the steak and mushroom and added Stilton because Stilton, and this looks and smells amazing. They also give you the choice of a large or a mini. Jeremy got the large, and I got a mini, and even like- The mini's still pretty good. The mini's pretty good size, good size but the yeah. large is- Epic. <laughs> that's just the cheese cauliflower and that's amazing. Big chunks of meat. Yeah, it's all really good. They have a turkey and trimmings um, that has like bacon and uh, just like, it's, I mean, to me sounds like Thanksgiving, but I got the no turkey, just the trimmings that has corn sausage and potatoes, carrots, cranberry sauce and stuffing and parsnips. I like that my carrots are like oozing into my cheese cauliflower mixture though. It tastes like Christmas. It's really good. This is a brilliant concept. I love the two-in-one pie idea. The pastry is so flaky and delicious. The pie itself is very savory. This is excellent. That was so tasty. 
We almost got their two-in-one pie that they also have as a dessert, uh, but the people sitting at the table near us told us that we needed to check out a ice cream shop not too far from here. So that is where we will head. <laughs> Oh my god, that one's drooling. <laughs> I love it. I love all the cows out here. Look at that one's like a Highland cow. We drove through some of the most amazing scenery. We saw cows, we saw beautiful rolling hills, and then I awkwardly parked on my own little hill where there's a car park that you can park it. Just just do that. Don't don't do me. This is Winston's Cotswold ice cream. Not only did the people that recommended this place tell us that they make homemade ice cream here daily, but they've actually been doing it since 1925. And that's pretty incredible. I got banoffee, banana, and toffee. Very, very good. Jeremy got blackberries and cream and honeycomb. Even Carly has an ice cream just for her. How you know your dog is spoiled. She won't eat her own ice cream, so you put it in your cup to get her to eat it. <laughs> All our ice creams were delightful. They have this really cool sitting area next to the, the building where you can look down and check out the view behind us. That's just amazing. Oh my gosh, do you think the cows we passed coming in are the ones that made our ice cream? Don't know. It's possible. Oh, I love it even more. <laughs> oh my gosh, cows are in the road and it's my favorite thing. I love it. The kind of traffic jam I'm excited about. <laughs> It wouldn't be a trip to the Cotswolds without visiting what is commonly referred to as the prettiest village in the Cotswolds, Castle Coombe. And it truly is. This is a place that we've seen so many pictures and videos about, but I don't think those do it justice. Like this truly is one of those places that is so magnificent in person. I feel like we read a lot of things saying that you need to get to the different villages really early or even later in the day. And I, I definitely see that's true because when we were in Painswick, it was packed in, I mean, it was a smaller car park, but it was packed there and there were quite a few people around. This is an even more popular village to visit and coming at the end of the day uh, is very peaceful and tranquil. There's not a lot of people around and we found street parking. It's really not crowded here at all right now. I can definitely see why people love it because it is such a beautifully preserved medieval village. At the center of the village is the Market Cross, which is a medieval market cross that served as the central meeting point and a trading place for uh, the local community. The Cotswolds was a prominent center for wool trade in the Middle Ages, and the name actually uh, is derived from two words. Cots was an old word uh, that meant sheep enclosure, and wolds refers to the rolling hills that characterize this region. So essentially, the Cotswolds means uh, sheep pens in the rolling hills. <laughs> what are the odds to see a Bucky sticker here? When uh, a couple just stopped us that watches our channel who are from Texas. It's fair. I'm sure they're not the ones that left that, but Probably it's an interesting not. coincidence. It is. <laughs> I would also say that, like most churches in England, this is a cute little church. It is a cute little church with some really old gravestones. <laughs> We've made it to our Airbnb destination for the night. Yeah, it looks really cute. <laughs> we have a whole video where we give a tour of it, so make sure that you uh, check that out. Uh, we'll also leave it in the description below. Oh, we have a view of the little school over there. I think it's a school. Did you find your bed? Yeah, is this where you, you're gonna sleep tonight? are so cute. Adorable. Good morning from Byberry. We have come to, I think this is considered the most photographed street in the UK. And also I think like the most famous place uh, in all of the Cotswolds. And that is Arlington Row, which is this uh, row of weavers cottages. That is just like the quintessential Cotswolds 
village yeah, yeah, homes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we got here around nine on a Saturday in June. So plenty of parking, but it has filled up pretty quickly. So definitely get here early if you want to come see the Arlington Row. I think I saw that this cottage here on the end is one that you can rent. So that could be a fun adventure. We're doing this short little loop walk that takes you by Arlington Road and then loops around to the trout farm and the village of Byberry, which even for a village is pretty small. We're also here with our friends Jason and Josh. You guys were just here in February. Yeah, in but February. It just probably looks a little heavy. different. <laughs> totally different. A lot warmer, a lot sunnier, and a lot more green. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> green is good. The Byberry Trout Farm is adorable. We're gonna grab some uh, coffee, maybe like a light breakfast here. Uh, but one thing that's really neat is that this trout farm has been a working trout farm since 1902. And I think it's the oldest operating one uh, in the UK. So that's pretty neat. Oh, that one's a big boy. Good coffee, good sausage rolls, just lovely vibes in general here in Bybury. It's really not a very big village, but it's, there's just something special about it. We've come to Borton on the Water, uh, also known as the Venice of the Cotswolds. It is so lovely here. On our way here, Jason and Josh were saying that this is one of their favorite places in the Cotswolds. And I can see why, because just immediately upon arriving, there's this cute river that runs through the center of town. And there are all these just adorable little bridges. Uh, there are people just like lounging out on the lawn. It's, it's lovely here. I love that there are dogs enjoying the water. Our dog doesn't really enjoy water in that way, or she might be in there right now. <laughs> She's like, no thanks. <laughs> oh my God, it's so amazing. So excited about the place that we have just come to. We actually first saw this in uh, one of Jason and Josh's videos a few years ago, before I ever knew anything about the Cotswolds. Uh, I saw them come to a model village here in Borton on the Water, and I thought it was amazing because it reminded me of the movie Hot Fuzz. And although we did go to Wells, the town that Hot Fuzz was filmed, but they do not actually have a model village. But this is as close as we're gonna get as. Uh, these two nerdy movie fans. And it's just really cool, it's neat. Like we don't have anything like this, I think, at home. I feel like so far my favorite thing is that the model village has a model village, has a model village. And I really don't know how far down that rabbit hole goes. <laughs> it's pretty neat though, right? It's really impressive actually. I like that they even have like tiny little bushes that are, you know. Sculpted into the little topiary sort yeah. of things. This is like we're standing on the ground where we are standing on the ground of. Oh, you can't take the bridge. Apparently oh, not. you can go, you you can can go, go on, that on that one. I love it. I think the real river is a little better though. <laughs> <laughs> yep, it's pretty cute. There's the motor museum. I love that they have updated them to include whatever they currently are. <laughs> it's great. Just saw a kid bending down on it to knock on a tiny door and it was the cutest thing here that's pretty great <laughs> at the end instead of a gift shop they feed you through a tap room and give you a 10 percent coupon there's a horse in the water this is officially the best day ever born on the water has all kinds of restaurants and shops and things you can see and do but it was getting pretty busy we took a footpath to lower slaughter which is one of the slaughters, two villages that are just quaint little villages that are nice to walk around. In an area full of cute cottages, we may have found the cutest one. This village is very, very beautiful. And there are just a lot of lovely cottages all around. We made the walk back to Borton on the Water to this little coffee house because we've decided that we need some cream tea. Uh, how's your scone? It's very good. It's like a soft scone. No, no, it's soft. Verdict on the cream tea? Absolutely beautiful. Really good, really good. But now yeah. it's all scone. We 
we are starting our third and final day in the Cotswolds in the lovely village of Chipping Camden. This is, like many villages that we've come across in the Cotswolds, a historic market village. We stopped for coffee at a place called Camden Coffee and Crystals. It says that well-behaved dogs are welcome, so Carly, you're gonna have to up your game. <laughs> it's this cute little coffee house that also is a crystal shop. Very uh, new age, cute place. So I got a latte. Uh, Jeremy got a matcha green tea. I had a lovely red velvet cupcake, one of the best I've ever had. And I also picked up a crystal and they put it in a cute little bag with some lavender. <laughs> That place was very zen. It was very calming. <laughs> My tea was good. Market Square here is just so picturesque. The market hall here dates back to the 1620s and I love that today it is still serving its market purposes. Oh, you know what this is giving me vibes of? The like little marketplaces in Diagon Alley. Oh, kind of, yeah. Yeah, and Hogsmeade. Someone is selling like sheepskins and cowskins in here. When we pulled in here this morning, you had mentioned that on the internet, all the places look the same, but they're really not. Yeah, so if you Google any Cotswold village, town or anything, you just see like a Cotswold stone building or a church. That's literally all you see. And then you get to them and you're like, it looks, it's got the same aesthetic, but it feels very different everywhere you go. Look at these hats. I love them. I would say that Chipping Camden is a little underrated. Like. I've seen things about it, but man, it just has so much charm here. There's cute little shops, there's nice looking restaurants and pubs, and on the way in, we saw cottages with thatched roofs. So that's an A plus in my book. <laughs> wow, it really is a fantastic door, isn't it? It is very fantastical. Yeah, like it just has the big trees next to it. The door itself is like rather wide but short and I just love the stained glass detail above it and there's like a neat lamp post above it too. Apparently what makes this door very special is that it uh, supposedly inspired J.R.R. Tolkien uh, in The Lord of the Rings, the, the Fellowship of the Rings. The Doors of Durin? Which means nothing to me. <laughs> <laughs> you have not read nor seen those movies. <laughs> As big of a movie fan as I am, I have never seen any Lord of the Rings movies or read any of the, the books, which I think is probably a, a thing I should probably do. Kara's gonna catch some hell in the comments. <laughs> I know, I know, it's bad. <laughs> I've seen the movies and read two of the books. <laughs> probably should read the other two. I mean, it does seem like a very Hobbit, Hobbit sized door, doesn't it? The church itself, St. Edward's Church, it's a a lovely, very pretty medieval church. When we were talking about what we wanted to do today, uh, we talked about coming to Still on the Wall. Yep, yep. And you guys were really excited about it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, we like it here. Yeah. 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 Okay. All right. So, cool. Is our excitement evident? <laughs> <laughs> It's the doors with the trees. It's all the quirky and fairy tales. We'll, we'll take you up a sheep passage in a minute. You'll, yeah. you'll okay. love it. It's an okay. experience there like no other. Really. All right. <laughs> look how cute these buildings are. Ooh, look at that one over there. The pattern on it. Yeah. Jason is taking us down a, a tiny path, a tiny alleyway. I don't know, what would you call this? A passageway? A tour? Tour. T-U-R-E. Oh. All right. Windows that they could pass stuff back and forth? Yeah, from would you one like, house to the other. Would you like That's some sugar? <laughs> Can I, I borrow that? So you're saying that they used to herd the sheep here into the market? That's what's believed. They used to herd the sheep through the passage so that they there's only room for one sheep at a time. So they used to be able to count them into the market square. One, two, three, four. Yeah, it's like counting <laughs> sheep and then they all fell asleep and the sheep run away. <laughs> <laughs> so what you're saying is, like most villages in the Cotswolds, this is also a historic market town, significant to the wool industry. <laughs> but boy, what a view from the stocks, right? Jason just pointed out these old stocks. These are original old stocks, I think from the 1600s. Pretty amazing. Apparently every Sunday, you can take a 90 minute walking tour for only five pounds. But I feel like for free, you have given us a very lovely tour. Yeah, and to anyone else will do it for four pound 50. <laughs> <laughs> Another thing that is neat about Stone on the Wald is that they have uh, what is allegedly the oldest inn in England uh, called the Porch House. 
I think it is actually one of the older, oldest inns in England because I think it dates back to like 947, I think. I think we have our eyes set on artisan cheese bread. Oh yeah. Is that what it was called? Yeah. I mean, that's not what it's called, but we're going to a place <laughs> that has it. <laughs> We came to this place called Dalesford Farm Shop, uh, but there's so much more here than just a farm shop. They have uh, everything from a little like wine courtyard, a restaurant, a garden center, even a wellness spa and cottages that you can stay in. The actual farm shop itself is incredible. Like there's so many things and we have never been to a farm shop in the UK before, I don't think. I think this one is like very high end as far as they go, it seems, but everything was reasonably priced. We ended up getting some like drinks and snacks for the road, but we still need to get actual lunch and their restaurant here uh, was fully booked. So we're gonna figure that out. <laughs> we tried to call about three or four different pubs uh, trying to find a place that was dog friendly, was serving food in the afternoon, and had a table for us. We have arrived in a place called Chipping Norton at a pub called The Fox. Not sure what to expect, but I think at this point we're just starving and ready to eat something. <laughs> Jeremy and I both got the Sunday roast. Looks amazing. That place was so good. Everything was really good quality. It's the best gravy I feel like I've had in a while and that Yorkshire pudding was primo. How, were, how was your food? Delicious. Oh, that fish and say, chips was amazing. That was the best roast I've had in a very long time. And the homemade tartar sauce made the fish and chips for me. All right. Chef's kids. Chef's kids. <laughs> <laughs> Heard the rumors about the Cotswolds being like hard to get into pubs and stuff. Uh, and apparently they're true, but hey, this place ended up being like just the perfect place to happen upon. <laughs> We have had an amazing first time in the Cotswolds. Thank you so much to our friends, Jason and Josh, for showing us around. You should definitely go check out their channel, JJ Extra, because they have been to the Cotswolds several times and have done and seen things that we have not done yet, like uh, they went to Siren Sester recently. So make sure you go subscribe to them. Thank you for watching, and thank you to our patrons for always supporting us. Also, if you're new here, subscribe to our channel and uh, check out this video where we stay in an adorable tiny Cotswolds cottage for the first time. <laughs>